<laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you. I'm going to watch on YouTube. Sam, you were great. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Maria. Nice to see you too, Dimitri. Bye-bye. Okay. Is it time? Take care, Dimitri. Later. Later, everyone. Nice to see you. Okay. So are we ready? Okay. Yes, Maria. Wait a second. I have to press continue. I am really pleased to welcome you all here to this reading by Sam Sachs, uh, sponsored by the Poetry Center at Passaic County Community College on Zoom because we can't meet in person right now, but we will, I hope, meet in person sometime in the fall. But for the moment, the good thing about Zoom is it allows us to reach people very far away. And we do have people who come from fairly far away to the Poetry Center, but this allows us to really extend our reach. And I want to continue to do some of this anyway, even, even when we're able to meet in person. I want to say that I have to thank uh, Smita Desai and Susan Balick for all their help in putting the reading together and doing the technical aspects of it, and Smita for her patience in writing all the letters and getting everything set up for me. And uh, so I'm very happy about that. And I also want to say that these readings are made possible by a grant from the New Jersey State Council on the Arts Department of State um, and by funding by Passaic County Community College and the support of the president of the college, Dr. Stephen Rose, and by individual contributions by people from across the country um, to the Poetry Center. So I wanna thank all those people. None of this would be possible without them. And I hope you go on our webpage and see the other things that we're doing and the contests and awards that we sponsor. Sam Sachs is a queer Jewish writer and educator, the author, author of Madness, Penguin 2017, winner of the National Poetry Series and Bury It, Wesley University Press, 2018, winner of the James, La James Laughlin Award for the Academy of American Poets. Sam has received fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts, Lambda Literary, and Majal Colony. He's a two-time Bay, Bay Area Grand Slam champion with poems in BuzzFeed, The Nation, The New York Times, Poetry Magazine, and other journals. In 2018, he was awarded a Ruth Lilly and Dorothy Sar Sargent Rosemer Poetry Festival from the Poetry, Poetry Foundation, and is currently a Wild Stegner, Stegner Fellow at Stanford University and lives in Oakland, California. And I think you're in for a real treat. Let's welcome Sam Sachs. Hi, thank you for that introduction, Maria. So nice to see you. Um, nice to see everyone's faces. We just spent the past 90 minutes together. Uh, big gratitude to Smita and Susan for everyone's work getting me out here, in here. Um, so I was meant to come here a year ago, right? And then like right at the onset of the pandemic. And it was like one of, yeah. So it was like, I think the first gig I had to cancel or reading I had to cancel. Um, so I was thinking I would read exclusively work written during the pandemic since then, which could not have been, <laughs> you know, read out um, well, like when I came to campus. Um, let me start a timer so I don't go over. Um, hi. So this, for, I've been like very nostalgic for things pre-pandemic, do you know what I mean? Even things that I hated. Um, I'm like, gosh, it would be great to like go be in a crowded room with people, which was like a big nightmare for me. Um, <laughs> and then I like looked to the root of the word nostalgia and it turns out it was like a clinical medical condition uh, as described by this World War I era psychiatrist um and it was describing the pain of soldiers returning from war and i was like oh that feels like it makes sense with uh you know with like how i'm negotiating memory and space so this poem is about being nostalgic for dancing a thing i hated to do okay <laughs> the memory has me spinning in an abandoned warehouse a synthetic drum kicks up dust in my chest I'm wearing some kind of nightmare jacket I sewed together myself from leather scraps. Don't care who sees. The lights are low enough. All of us have been soft blended into nothing, into one body. 
at last no desire to feel desirable and who cares which chemicals I've swallowed and which ones my brain's made itself. The floor is a mouth waiting to open. I came here with friends alone to be by myself, beside myself, to stomp atop lips, the beat you'd have to be dead to miss and I miss it, arms lifted into Gothic architectures waiting to be torn apart by some coming war. I kiss a boy just to leave my lip gloss on him, wear a pair of plastic wings, his cum suddenly porcelain, go ahead and gorge on the dance hall floor. This warehouse is in West Oakland, in North Portland, in somewhere New Jersey. This warehouse is in a vacant shopping mall by a Sunco beside water. This warehouse is only in the mind where it existed for one night, then disappears into cracked frescoes on cathedral ceilings or painted on the walls of caves. This warehouse comes back to me in my apartment, reading a book by someone dead written when they were a kid. None of us is to be trusted. I have never been without worry, especially while dancing. My people come from worry. Worry my country, worry my wild lung. I was never young. Even as a boy, I was an old woman straightening papers, which if you insist is also a form of dancing. Okay, that's my, that's my first poem about dancing. Let me spit out my gum, but I'll do it off camera so as to be respectable. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, okay, happy May Day, everybody. Um, excited to be here with you and respect and solidarity for all workers um particular and I'm, I'm currently working at Moe's Books in Berkeley California um and we've just recently unionized and are in the middle of um negotiating our union contract um and someone someone uh in the in the union was like oh you write poems you should write a poem for our rally that we were having outside the store um and I didn't get it done in time but I wrote it afterwards um, cause I was having trouble finding my way into the poem, but this is, uh, but then I learned that, uh, union and onion, the words are cognate, right? Which means they, they come from the same sort of Latin root. So I wrote a poem, uh, in honor of onions for, for the, for the bookstore union. Um, it's called upon learning onion and union are cognate. In praise of the onion with its sphered shape, inexact as the earth itself perfect for throwing through a precinct window. In the parking lots, in the targets, in the warehouses, there are onions waiting to grow. In the airports and the bookstores and the orchids, there are onions. In the theaters and fried meat chains and dancing cages, there are onions. In the onions, there are onions and there are onions in the throat. Even the driest food desert is a field waiting in fallow. All onion busters <laughs> deserve the gallows. Inside the onion lies the same chemical compound used to make tear gas, which just here, several years back, a block of was dropped from a helicopter onto students asking only to speak. There's a reason when you slice into a union, the knife wielder weeps. I don't wanna break bread, but the privatized feast to plant books in the earth and feed our people on whatever language grows. I know the man who pilots the helicopter is not in our onion, nor any police nor the one who profits off people bending in fields, harvesting the bulbs he'll use to light his many palaces, but you love, waking in the morning, brushing your teeth, cruising the bathroom in order to take back your time from whoever pays you to sit and smile and turn money into water. All I wanna do is be an onion with you, to hold you close in the dark folds of an onion in its meat and say, honey, all we need is a little oil, a little heat to take this bitter inheritance to make it sweet, make it sweet, make it sweet. Cool. Onions and unions. In praise of the onion. Okay. Um, next. Okay, so this poem is actually a little bit older. Um, my brother had twins uh, just at the start of the pandemic. And I was working on a sequence of poems in honor of uh, my nibblings, which is the ungendered term for a niece or a nephew, nibbling, like a sibling with an N. Um, and so I was working on these sweet, this suite of poems for them. And then he was like, he said something that sort of spawned or spurred this next poem. Um, so it's called For My Nibblings in Anticipation of Their Birth. 
my brother, knowing my work well, asked I not include any references to semen in the throat in this poem I am writing you. So I shan't. Instead, semen in the books, semen in the leaves, semen in the ground that grows the semen trees, also known as the calorie pear, semen in the boat that carried our family here, semen in the waters where we left our dead, semen in the meadows where we buried and bled, semen in the light streaming through our synagogue window, the stained glass depicting an ark in an ocean of semen, gossamer semen octopus semen, garden of semen. <laughs> there are so many words for you children and none of them are dirty, though not all of them are yours. Now, as you eat what your mother eats, her fear is yours as this world is torn and thrown to birds, but still the light is thick in the trees. The calorie pears are loud this season and my throat is bright with flowers for you both. Such beautiful flowers. I hardly have the words. Okay, very good. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do one more poem and then show a video. I've been trying to make these poem films through the pandemic, cause I was like, I got nothing else to do. Might as well, <laughs> might as well try to do that. Um, so thank you for, for both listening to the poems and being open to hearing or to watching a video. So I don't think I've actually read this poem before, but um, at Stanford, my, my teacher, the poet Ivan Bolin, died just at the start of the pandemic. Um, and so this is a poem, this is a poem for her, or just thinking through inheritance and teaching and pedagogy. Yeah. Right. It's called Pedagogy. Yeah. Now she's gone, my teacher wants to know where the speaker enters the poem. The wind blows open and the screen door catches on its chain. Out back, my neighbors are smoking a pig to make it last. My teacher only became my teacher after she passed. Before that, she was just a giant who had lived a long time. As always, I am an ungrateful child, a student first in ingratitude, ungracious as a wasp in the heather, a knot in a history of rope your hands don't notice as you hold on for dear life. Dear life, the speaker is the chain holding the door closed and the wind is my teacher, as is the smoke curing the meat. My teacher had stories about all the dead poets, which made her, while living, prophetic. Proximity next to godliness. For a woman who had no use for music or pleasure, the writing beats the page till its knuckles sing. My speaker wants to know when the teacher enters the poem, if she ever leaves, if she's always there in the text, shaking her head cutting back the weeds. Okay, that was a poem for Van Bolin, who had a posthumous collection come out recently, um, which is worth a read for sure. Um, okay, okay, so now now I'm gonna pivot onto the audiovisual portion of, <laughs> of my reading. This is just a short video too, so if you hate it, it's all good. Um, okay, let me say, let me say, here we go. I made it for this uh, Arts Research Center thing. Um, at the University of California, Berkeley. Oh, let me make sure I'm sharing the audio too, because I sing in it. You know, no spoilers, but I'm not the best singer, but I've, I'm definitely not the worst one. Huh? Okay, well, here we go, here we go. Share sound, boom. Okay, excellent. No. Uh, all right. Y'all hear that all right? No, you can't? I'm not getting any sound. All right, okay, let me, all right, here we go. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to change it up. Let me, I gotta use my partner. Sorry, I'm on my, my boyfriend's computer um, because mine died. That's right, it's not compatible <laughs> with, uh, this should work better. I don't know. Yeah. Okay.
He touched me and I opened. He touched me and I froze. He touched me and I'm hoping. Now that he's touched me, no one knows. I open like a book, he like a book about the history of leather, I'm a book open. about bad weather, about winter, like a hospital window he letting cool air in, like an errant nail I'm opening close. a forearm like a braid, like a box to a blade, he like a blade holding light, like a lightning bug fingered I'm into bright broken. letters spelling out his name, his name. Like a dead alphabet now in a living mouth, like a bulb thumbed Lord, into blooming, I'm a bulb closed. broken after the bride says fine, why not? He a dollar transformed into water, like an opera, I'm like an island, like an eye. How many he's have there been he opening? Touched me How many openings have been I only cried. for him? For him only, for whatever him I've hung to call him back to me. He's for him, I have answered back in his name, was I'm accepted choking. into that lexicon. So long as I dead my true wilderness, now so long as I kill the loose neck swans, Lord, the femme gossipy I'm bulldogs. Known. Though I hold no god inside me, I am a slit for now all of them. An eyelid the thread passes Lord, through, the I'm hole known. in the word apology, a door between organs wet and winged and ancient. Yet, watching the sun touch the ground this morning was so devastating. I had to sit down on the pavement simply to praise it. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So what, am I the best singer or the very best singer you've ever heard? <laughs> what are we <laughs> like? If you had to say. It's not like speaker, okay. speaker on the uh, wall, right? Thomas and this poem is uh, Oops, sorry. That's the next. Um, there were two seasons last the year. The next person. You should check out the series. is killer. The next poem is by Damani Thomas. That's a great, great piece of writing. Um, Sam, one of the things that came up for me during that video is... I've been listening to a lot of um, medieval polyphonic music and the way that the music and the voices layer creates an experience inside of me that I sort of deeply find I want to replicate in my poems. And I don't know how to do that yet. All I know is that I want to do it. And what intrigued me about what you just shared with you was that one beginning of an answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you, Ted. I appreciate that. I, I would take a gander at uh, Philip Metris has a sequence of poems that are written for three voices. Um, and there's like a great tradition of sort of like dialogic or polyvocal poems that uh, that I could also point you to if you're interested. Um, and his, that sort of Philip Metris, M-E-T-R. Yes. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Um, and that, that actually- More poems. Yeah. 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 Some more poems. There's more poems? Yeah, so actually that come on. That that comment uh sort of points me to my next uh my next poem. I wasn't gonna read it, but I was but thinking about sort of sound and ancestry. Um this this poem's called Phonomania, a history of noise, and it tracks a sound from the beginning of the universe to the present moment. This is the project of the poem. Okay. Polyphony, euphony, diapassion, the oldest sound. Paramecium, parthenogenesis, to be torn into, to be made into, to grow legs, to be thrown up on land, amphibious bronchial ligament, sound carried like a filament ligature filigree, homo habilis, homo sapiens, stone grunting into spark, suit stitch from skins, the flicker of life forced in a screaming belly mesolithic, neolithic, cereal crop planted in rows, metal molded into axe heads and thrones, Christ throwing his tantrums at fig trees, the first noise, 
Capital, coffle, chattel, modernity. Same sound you dragged into the hospital with you. Your mother's face, a whole note. Your cradle song, a doctor's coat. Ecometry, homonymy, phonology, dial tone, desperation, begging the stranger over, consinity, cacophony. On my knees, lips pressed against the absence of your zipper. You in my mouth like a new language, shape opening strange notes in my neck. Tongue I worked so hard to master, but when you came inside me, my Lord, the sound you made. Cool, cool. So yeah, so that poem tracks, uh, yeah, tracks the first noise to me sucking some dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that's an older poem. Let me let me move to uh, another a new project. Um, so we've been having some wildfires out here in California, uh, and, and so and so I uh, you know we had to like stay inside just because we're everything was blanketed in smoke. And so this is a, this is a poem that came out of being living inside in the most beautiful place in the world, but you can't go outside because uh, it'll start coughing. All right, and it was like double trouble because it was during the pandemic, right? Like two apocalypses at once. Um, so it's called Quarantine Adieu. A new app tells us whether it's safe to breathe. I haven't been outside in weeks. Afternoons, sunbathe on the living room floor beneath the barred windows. It's grown sepia out there. A filter descends over the true face of the world. The little man on my phone is purple today, wears a gas mask, recommends not wear riding a bicycle. <laughs> I wipe ashes from my packages. My mail carrier, Chris, says it's the end of the fucking world. If anyone <laughs> should know, it should be him. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night. Almost two and a half millennia ago, we split Brussels, broccoli, kale, collards, kohlrabi, all from the same wild cabbage. Such imaginations humans have. It's a miracle life existed here, long as it has. So that's that one. Um, so this poem, this is a poem. Okay, this is the the last poem I wrote for my last reading, which was my friend's book launch. Uh, the poet Cameron Awkward Rich. Um, and so yeah, it was like the last in person reading I did. Um, and his book's amazing. It's called uh, Dispatch. Um, yeah, would recommend checking it out. Cameron Awkward Rich. And I, I wrote a poem whose only sort of uh, obligation was to try to make him smile. And so this is that poem. It's called The Shape My Suffering Makes in the World is Small, is Small, is Small. Hard to say exactly, but there is something terribly sad about being a man spreading peanut butter over bread this late in the evening. Sadder still to have paid extra for the fancier jam and when carrying it home, be unable to stop smiling. To ration out the raspberry preserves spoon by spoonful onto one side of the dry bread so as to elongate the experience of anticipated pleasure. I see myself above myself wielding this idiot grin like a child reflected back in the butter knife and realize pleasure and longing always carry inside them a tremendous sadness. And this is nearly but not quite the same sadness of any boy standing before a mirror working the gel in his hair into a knife, sculpting the shape he'll later cut into the night, mask he'll perfect until it becomes his own indivisible face. Also nearly but not quite the sadness of buttoning a, buttoning a new shirt and finding it fits. The sadness of buttons in general, the sadness of gifts received or given, the sadness of spent money, of money saved. The root of sadness is buried somewhere in the language, beyond the old banks, below the fields behind your childhood apartment, which eventually will sprout, sprout into great crops of harvestable sadness, profitable sadness, worms that worm their worm fingers into your family's posed and smiling photographs, the sadness of new pets for cigarettes, of children laughing, of laughing children. The sadness of new synagogues, of old books, of brises and bat mitzvahs and weddings. Desire is sad. Longing, also sad. Wanting anything is always, always sad. My brain canters in its shallow chemical bath, luxuriates in the seasonal bouquet of grief hormones that leave me somehow more bereft than when I was actually grieving. When Sean died, I let out one single crystalline tear, then returned to my work 
Now I break down sobbing, doing the simplest tasks, struggling to open a bag of bread, watching a chipped blue dish, staring out a window as power lines cut the sky into empty sheet music. What gives? What gist or gristle Jesus? Christ, of course, is sad. Christ is the concourse of sadness, and God, in his infinite sadness, willed my friends with delightful and compatible sadnesses, or sadness I, friends with whom to crow and grow more unusual in this beautiful dead country, to sit quietly in circles in hotel lobbies across America and curse America and whisper our particular exquisitely crafted grief apparatuses until sadnesses like broken pianos snap their strings in burning warehouses sadnesses like a sibling running beside you sadness like a real church organ played by a fake god oh jubilant exuberant sadness oh rejoicing joyous sadness Oh, my sad and well-lit friends, I know somewhere in this city men are getting rich off fighting dogs, but for now we have poems and a bottle of something dark and whatever it is that will keep on feeding us this deep into the night. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like I made all my best friends writing sad poems and then hearing them read out their sad poems and being like, oh yes, okay, we're kindred, <laughs> that's us. Um, cool. So I actually haven't been reading a lot of poems out of my new book. I'm working on a new book. Um, so both like the farm animal and men, right. And cops and, uh, being a bottom and kosher law and surveillance and global food systems. Yeah. So it's like sort of all circling around the pig is the container with which I'm looking at the world. Um, and so there's a poem from that project, my buddy, um, my buddy Steve got a heart transplant uh, with a section of a pig aorta. Now that's a process called xenotransplantation, right? And so it's like, it's like such a dark, strange miracle of science. People are so weird. Um, and so there's a poem for him called Xenotransplantation. Steve's got a pig heart in him. Or Steve's got part of a pig's heart, a piece. His heart's part pig. The aortic valve is the dog god guarding the tube blood runs through once it's been scrubbed clean. One of two semi-lunar valves, which sounds like part of a moon, a piece. Steve's got moons in him. Separating the two major atriums, Steve is full of ballrooms, those dark vaulted ceilings. Steve's a vegan. Steve is a vegan with a pig heart thumping club music. Steve believes the pig in him is also vegan because it eats what he eats, speaks when he speaks. The pig heart pulses in his chest like a reflection of a puddle in the mo a moon in the puddle out behind the club once we've finished dancing. Steve takes drugs so his body won't reject the unfamiliar organ. Steve takes drugs so he can go on dancing. His pig grown to be sewn into a man's ribs, unnaturally selected. No God could have predicted this in the garden, but still holy, the bit of tissue that lets him live and live. Thin miracle that set another 17 years going inside him. But if you listen close with one ear to his chest, you can hear the pig heart singing, calling out to any listening animal, all I, want is to live and live and live and live. Cool. So that, one's, that one's for Steve. Um, how are we doing on time? I think I got time for like maybe two more poems. Yes. That seems right. Okay. 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 So I know where I'm closing, but what what do I want to do in the interim? I just got a stack of stack of papers. Um, okay, yeah, I'll do this. I'll do this with this this little baby. It's called uh, it's a project. Who knows how successful it is? It's called um, "Poem Where Every Country Is Replaced by a Body," um, and I wrote the poem, and then I replaced every word every time the word "country" appeared. I replaced it with the word "body." I wake up and look for ways to leave my body. Make coffee and thumb my phone comparing flights. So many friends are moving to the city to raise their kids in the body. 
and it doesn't not feel like a betrayal, having kids, I mean. The body is a fine place to move, to grow up and old in. It's where your vote counts most, where the sky opens above you like a letter from some long dead godmother and anything is possible, though often lonely. I wake up and there are new fires in the body north of here, poisoning the air down in Oakland. I wipe the burned vineyards off the hood of my car, breathe in and out the stray house cats and houses. The president claims he's sick and we all delight after the nightmare he's performed on the body. But has the body ever had a soul, as so many keep calling it, some moral center to return to? Wasn't this body built only on unrepatriated blood? When you die, do you leave this body or are you stuck here forever? American even in death or most especially. We sit around the table discussing how best to leave. We who come from those who fled their body again and again only to realize it's a myth. All you can ever be citizen to, you already carry in your chest. Okay, okay. And so this is going to be my, my last poem. And there's like a moment where there will be uh, an, an interactive situation. So be prepared to unmute um, if that's all good. Okay, so all right, this is an ode to Miss Piggy um, from the Muppets. Cool, cool. Oh, great porcine drag queen. You... <laughs> who grew erudite in the slaughterhouse shadow, eyelashes like black swords teased up to challenge heaven, eternal in your powdered foundation, refusing every day the knife's inevitable and unkosher ending. Be snouted fount of youth, seminal queer iconoclast, pearls to bed, pearls in the junkyard, pearls on television, diva of late night, of prime time, of talk shows, Door kicker for the non-conventional romance. Shown us all how to love across identities arbitrary as phylum and species. How you took an entire frog inside you and remained the same bad pig. Who karate chop anyone dumb enough to disrespect. Um, and on three, can we get a hi -ya? One, two, three. hi, -ya! hi -ya! Okay, that's pretty good. Let's try it one more time though. One, two, three. hi, -ya! hi -ya! Yes, excellent. Okay, now one time with feeling behind it. Okay, one, two, three. Hi, -ya. Hi -ya. Is it? Okay, yes. What little queer wouldn't look upon you and be seen or saved or salved? You who never questioned your destined for stardom. Oh, Miss Miss. Oh, great swine demimond. Oh, dame pig. I'm yours till I end. You, my religion. How I understand all of us now. We are ourselves and the hand inside that guides us. We who are given voice by the same spirit that gives voice to everyone we have ever loved. Cool. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. Great, Sam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Thank for having you. me. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. That's Sam. See you soon. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for writing with me all. Wonderful, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, this was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Come here, Cool. All right, we all have a good one. Bye. Will you be able to send the packets to us through Smita? Oh. Smita, can yeah, you can send it to me and I'll send it to everyone. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, can I grab your email? I don't know if I have it offhand. Um, it's S-Desai, D-E-S-I-S-A-I. -S -S 